Since I've recently turned 40, I've noticed that I've started caring less about what people think. For instance, I don't care too much that uh, the crazy Scotsman thinks that I roll out of bed for most of these. Also, after watching and being a fan of Gun Drama Johnny and his fabulous boas, that I would start donning scarf and not really care what people think. I've also stopped caring what people think because instead of opening up a real beer, I might just pop open a Zima, put some added flavor, put some added flavor in it for the Jolly Rancher, and voila, perfect drink. Holy crap, that's about to foam over. And I'll finally, something that I don't care what people think about, I've considered not only carrying a Glock, but a 40 caliber Glock. Welcome to the Millserve Mike channel. Before watching this video, I recommend you watch my 10mm and 40 Smith & Wesson history video to first get a Cliff Notes history on the 40 Smith & Wesson round, as this video will mainly be about my Smith & Wesson 4026 KCPD edition. As stated in that video, the FBI wanted Smith & Wesson to develop a pistol for Special Agent John Hall's light-loaded 10mm cartridge based on the Smith & Wesson 4506 45 ACP pistol. When Smith & Wesson got the cartridge, they realized there was a lot of airspace in the re regular 10mm case and figured they could size the case down so they could make a more affordable and lighter pistol based on the 9mm frame. Smith & Wesson and Winchester worked on the cartridge and Smith worked on the pistol. Somehow, Gaston Glock got his hands on the new Smith & Wesson 40 Smith & Wesson ammo at SHOT Show that year and a light bulb also went off in his head that he could couple the engineering from the Glock 20, which is almost complete, could be coupled with basically a 9mm frame, and Glock actually beat Smith & Wesson by a week to the announcement of their new pistols. Glock had with the 20, Glock 22, and Smith & Wesson with the 4006. The FBI and many law enforcement agencies accepted the new third generation offering from Smith & Wesson, and those were the first time many of these agencies issued semi-automatic sight arms replacing venerable old revolvers. The 4006 was all stainless was all stainless steel frame with a 4-inch barrel and was single action double action with a slide mounted decock safety. It featured a one-piece grip made of Xenoy instead of the earlier two-piece grip. It also had three dot Novak sights. It was fed by an 11 round staggered column magazine. The 4006 spawned a whole series including the aluminum frayed 4003 and 4043 pistols and the double action only 4046. This brings me to the Smith & Wesson 4026, which is what I'm presenting today. The main difference between the 4006 and the 4026 is that the 4026 is double action only and has a frame mounted SIG style decocking lever and no manual safety. When I first saw this listed at a local auction, I was interested because of the Kansas City Police Department laser etching. I got the pistol for $400, which I thought was a good deal for a 4026. At first, I assumed the laser etching was something that the KCPD had done on the aftermarket until I read a little, read up a little on them. When I was just Googling the KCPD 4026, I pretty much saw older ads of people selling them, claiming only 350 and 401 were made. I then came across the official Smith & Wesson catalog, which specifically lists the KCPD 4026. It said that there were a total of 1,400 made. I was very happy with my purchase after finding out I had something fairly rare. Basically, in 1992, the KCPD made the change from revolver to semi-auto pistols. They initially ordered 1,400 4026s from Smith & Wesson that were laser engraved and had Trigicon night sights. Officers were required to purchase these when they converted from their revolvers, and the initial officer price was $298, and that was with all taxes included. Later, 4026s were ordered from Smith & Wesson without the engraving, and KCPD replaced the 4026s with the Sigma 40F in, 19, in 1996, as Smith & Wesson had continued the, discontinued the 4026. Shortly after that, they went to the Glock 22 and 23, 
as did most law enforcement agencies around the country. Officers who had them were allowed to keep their 40s, 26s if they so desired. Shooting this pistol was a blast. Although it has a shorter barrel, the recoil wasn't much different than the Glock 22 I took out on the same day. This could have something to do with metal versus plastic. Although 11 plus 1 is not a very high capacity by today's standards, 12 rounds along with the quick reload ability by changing out a mag would be a night and day difference for an officer used to carrying an old 38 Special. These have a great reputation for quality as they are built like a tank. The only complaints I could see is the weight for concealed carry and capacity compared to later Glocks, but the weight wouldn't bother me as much as I usually carry a Beretta compact that is roughly the same size. Considering what the alternative was in 1992, I would definitely be happy betting my life on the 4026. Please be aware of where your elected officials and the groups who claim to represent you stand. After some study, you may find that the Republican you voted for or the NRA agree with more with Feinstein than they do you. This means primaries are important. Please consider the GOA, a no-compromise group who keeps you informed of what is going on, and most importantly, your state's organization that does most of the heavy lifting when it comes to legislation nationwide, and also has more information on local candidates compared to the bigger groups. If you like what you see, please check out some of my other videos, and check out my Facebook, Twitter, and who I support on Patreon. Thank you for watching, and as always, have a great day.